Today we'll dive into NestJS and tackle an important topic called caching. I'll break down caching in NestJS into simple terms and we'll show you how to implement it. But before we start, let's understand how caching works in NestJS. We have multiple ways on how we can cache data in our application based on our project needs. First up, we have in-memory caching. Imagine it like having a sticky note on your desk where you quickly write down important info. In NestJS, the application stores data directly in its memory. So when a request comes in, it checks this fast access memory first before doing any heavy lifting. It's like having a quick reference guide that saves a lot of time. It is super quick for small scale applications and is easy to set up and doesn't require any external tool. However, it has limitations. As your application grows, the in-memory cache may struggle to keep up. It's great for simplicity, but not always the best for handling large volumes of data or multiple server instances. So in order to resolve this issue, we can use a data store like Redis. When your Nest app needs to cache something, it sends the data to Redis. And whenever it needs the data again, it checks Redis first. It's like having a team-wide memory, ensuring consistency and efficiency across the board. So which one to use? In a nutshell, if you're working on a smaller project where simplicity is the key, in-memory caching might be your go-to. It's fast and straightforward. On the other hand, if you're dealing with a larger application, handling a substantial amount of data, or need to share that data across different instances, Redis could be the hero. It brings scalability and robustness to the table. Next, let's implement caching within our application. All right, let's see this in action. I've created a simple Nest application for this tutorial. To start with, I'll first install the required packages for caching. Once the packages are installed, next, let's import cache module in app module file. In imports, we can type cache module and import it from NestJS cache manager package. Next, let's import the register method. This register method takes few optional properties. First, we have max, which is the maximum number of keys we can store in cache memory. Let's set it to 100. Next, we have DTL, which is a cache expiry time. Now, if I open package JSON, notice the version for cache manager. It is 5. So, if we are using cache manager of version 4, we need to define TTL in seconds. If it is greater than 4, then we need to define TTL in milliseconds. Now, if we want that we don't want our cache to expire, we can set it to 0. Now, since we have registered cache module, Let's see in-memory caching. So to interact with cache manager instance, we need to inject it to our class using cache manager token. I'll head over to app service. I'll create a constructor first. Then I'll inject our cache manager token, which is imported from nest cache manager package. Next, I'll create an instance for our cache manager class. which is imported from cache manager. Next, I have created two methods to set and get cache keys. Set cache key will accept two parameters, key and value, and will set the key in the cache memory. Get cache key method will accept key as the parameter and will fetch the value for that key from the cache memory. If the key does not exist in memory, it returns null. Next, I have created route for these two methods. Let's run our app first and hit these endpoints. To run our app, let's create a Docker image first. Once the image is built, let's run it in our container. We can see our app is running. Next, let's open Postman and hit these endpoints. We have set two keys, first name and last name. Now let's try to get these keys. I'll try to get first name first. So I'm getting the data. Similarly, let's try to get the last name key as well. Now let's try to get a key that we haven't set so far. Let's say age. So in this case, since we haven't set this key, we are getting null as data. Next, I've added few more methods. 
to delete a cache key to reset the whole cache memory this will delete all the keys and to get all the keys in our cache store also have added routes for these three methods as well next let's open postman let's first try to get all the keys from our store so we have two keys that we created previously let's try to delete one of these keys let's try to delete first name this will delete our key now if we try to get first name we'll get null similarly let's try to reset our cache this will clear our cache so if i try to get all the keys we don't have any key now this is not an ideal way how we cache data in our application we don't have to hit these endpoints every time we want to save data in cache memory these endpoints were just for this tutorial to show how caching works in sgs and how we can use inbuilt cache manager to fetch the cache data nest provides a mechanism to auto cache the data when it's fetched from db let's see that in action i've created a new user module for auto caching i'll create a new endpoint to get data and we'll try to auto cache that data first i'll head over to app module in my cache module register method i'll register a new property is global and we'll set it to true if you want to use cache module in other modules in our application we have to import it in those modules but since we set is global property to true it will be loaded in root module and will be available to use in other modules in my user service i've created a new method get users which is returning test users data from json placeholder api next let's create an endpoint for this method in my user controller i've created a get endpoint to get all users now if we want to cache data for this route we can bind cache interceptor here so after our get decorator let's import use interceptors decorator which accepts an interceptor let's add cache interceptor which is important from nest cache manager package what it does is it intercepts the incoming requests before they reach their respective handlers it checks if there is a cached response available for the request if there is it returns the cached response instead of forwarding the request to the handler if there isn't a cached response the interceptor allows the request to proceed to the handler and once the request is generated it caches it for future requests now if we want to cache all routes in this controller we can bind cache interceptor at controller level so if we remove it from here and add it up for controller decorator in this way it will cache all get routes within this controller next let's head over to postman and hit this endpoint we can see that we don't have any keys in cache memory now if i hit this endpoint first time it will take some time to fetch data we can see that it took 907 milliseconds to fetch users data but if we hit endpoint again we can see it fetch data in a very less time because this time it fetched data from cache memory now if we see the cache key again we can see that it takes the route as key since we didn't set any key explicitly for this route i'll head over to vs code again and my user controller after i've defined the get decorator i'll import the cache key decorator and here i'll define the key for this route let's name it users now the next time i hit this endpoint it will store the value for this route against the user's key so far so good if we can cache our data in inbuilt cache memory then why do we need third party stores like redis the reason is in memory cache will reset every time our nest application is restarted or even crashed so we need a store like redis to store cache data so that even if our app is crashed or even restarted we don't lose our cache data Although this is not the only reason to use Redis, there are many other advantages as well of using Redis, like its scalability, persistence, etc. Next, let's add Redis Store in our Nest application. Now, in order to use Redis, we need to install two more packages. Cache Manager Redis Store package allows us to use Redis as a cache store with Cache Manager.
Next, we need to install this package, which provides TypeScript type definitions for Cache Manager Ready Store package. We need to install it as a developer dependency. Once both packages are installed, we can head over to App Module and import our package. Then, in our register method, we can add another property called Store and point it to Ready Store. By default, it points to In Memory Store. Then, we need to add host and port of our ready store so port is by default 6379 and for host since we are running redis in docker we need to define the container ip so first let's head over to docker and check if our redis image is running then let's open our terminal and type docker ps this will list down our running containers then copy the container id for redis and type docker inspect And then paste this id we'll get the ip address for our container let's copy this and paste here now we are getting an error for store property it says that there is a type mismatch for the property that means it is expecting a value that we are not providing so if we head over to package json we can see that we have installed the latest version for cache manager at store which is version 3 we need to decrease this version and provide version 2 here. So let's open terminal. Let's clear it first and uninstall our package. Then let's install version 2 for this package. So this error should be gone now. Now, once we have set up our Redis store, let's hit the endpoint again and see if data is being cached in Redis or not. Let's open Docker first. Then in containers, click on this Redis container, go to execute tab and type Redis hyphen CLI to interact with the Redis CLI. Then type keys asterisk to list down all the keys. We can see that there is no key currently in Redis. Then open Postman and hit the endpoint again. We got the data and it took about 700 milliseconds to fetch the data. Let's see if we got the key in Redis or not. Let's type key asterisk again. And we can see that we now have users key in Redis. If we want to get the data, we can type get and then users. And we can see that we have our cache data. Now if I hit the endpoint again, it took just 14 milliseconds to fetch the data now because it fetched the data from Redis cache. And that's it. With just a few lines of code, we have implemented caching in our Nest application. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.